Hi everyone, it's Alice and today we're gonna do some more specific book recommendations. We're also going to be doing some baking today. I'm just gonna do some regular sweet buns. I don't really know how to translate this into English but I think it's just like a sweet bun. And one of the reasons that I want to make it is that I saw a picture on Pinterest where someone had made like some sort of bun in the shape of a pumpkin and obviously I have to try and make that. They just look so sweet and autumnal so I'm gonna try to like shape them into that by using twine. <laughs> I've seen some different ways of people trying to make like baked goods into a pumpkin shape but I'm gonna try it with twine and we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't look great at the end I know that the buns will taste good so that's all that really matters but I also kind of just I feel like having a little sweet bun in the shape of a pumpkin is the sweetest thing. The connection to pumpkins though will end at the shape because I haven't made like a dough that is like particularly like it, it doesn't have anything to do with pumpkins. Maybe it's possible to make sweet buns with pumpkin spice but pumpkin spice I don't know what it is <laughs> and it's not really a thing here like I've never been able to find pumpkin spice in a store here so I don't know if it's just like a super American thing so I've just made like a dough with some spices that feel autumnal. I did make the dough in advance because it needed to rise and based on the shape of this it looks like it has risen very well so we are gonna take this out this is very satisfying we're gonna take this out and I'm gonna separate it into 12 and then I think it needs to rise again and then I'm gonna do the twine maybe so the twine doesn't get like all up in the dough how am I gonna get it out whatever we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but I'm gonna start by taking out this dough very satisfying to look at. The dough does feel very nice though, so I'm happy with that. Hopefully it tastes all right and looks all right in the end. I mean, I'm gonna eat it anyway, but I have this image in my head of what these are gonna look like and I hope that I can like make them like that. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into these autumn book recommendations. I asked on Instagram for some specific requests and I got quite a few, so you know how this works. We're just going to go through them. The first request says, a book that just makes me feel cozy that's not a mystery. Now, the first thing that came to mind for me here was Legends and Lattes. If you haven't read that yet, it's a cozy fantasy book about this orc who is leaving behind her life of going on adventures and quests and having quite a um, violent life in a way. And she goes to this town to start a cafe but in this town, no one knows what coffee is. So she's like bringing coffee to the people. And it is just a very, very sweet, cozy story. It is quite a simple story in a lot of ways. And it's very much like slice of life. But I really just love the characters in the book and following them. And it's just like one of the books that I've read that's made me feel the most cozy. The second request says a book you think about when you think about crisp air, fog, and the days getting shorter. I feel like all of my answers to this are like very basic but like the very first one that I thought of was of course The Secret History by Donna Tartt. There is something very autumnal about that book but it's like a dark type of autumnal but there is something about like a school setting that really makes me think of fall and crisp air and the days getting shorter. It's just, it's just peak autumn to me, that book. And I feel like you can read it anytime you want, obviously, but reading that book in autumn is just so good. I also thought of Ninth House because that also has a school setting, but Ninth House is urban fantasy and Again, there's a lot of dark stuff that happens in that book. There's like secret societies and all kinds of stuff happening in that book. But I really, really love that book. I think it's great. I, I'm thinking, I feel like I associate Autumn with dark academia so much that it's very difficult for me to think of any other books 
for this request. I guess also though, The Strings of Murder feels like a very autumnal book to me. It's set in Edinburgh in like the 1800s. I want to say like 1880, but I might be slightly off. But that also feels very autumnal to me. Again, it's dark and there's like occult stuff happening. This is more of a mystery type book, but it's very, very... I don't know, it just reminds me of autumn, but now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember if it's actually set in autumn, but yeah, that makes me think of that as well. I think maybe the main thing though that's making me think of this book is the fog, because like the atmosphere of this book is so good, and you can just picture this dark, foggy Edinburgh, and the setting is just so good. It's also just a really fun book. The next request says a sweet, easy, cozy, and heartwarming book that simply screams autumn. I think Pumpkinheads is the perfect recommendation for this one because that book, I don't think I have another book that screams autumn more than that. It might be because it's a graphic novel, so obviously there's a lot of visual stuff going on, but that is really like sweet, heartwarming, super duper autumnal, and just a really really lovely read. Also Garlic and a Vampire is a great one that's also a graphic novel and it has a lot of autumnal colors to it. Not as much as Pumpkinheads but it's pretty hard to top Pumpkinheads when it comes to like the colors but it feels very autumnal and it's a very very sweet and heartwarming story and very easy. It's not too deep or anything but it's very very sweet. Then we have one that I actually kind of struggled with a little bit so if any of you have any recommendations for this let me know because I haven't read a lot of these types of books. It says a cozy family story. I feel like most of the family stories that I read are like pretty hard-hitting and kind of like sad or heartbreaking or whatever so this is a little bit of a difficult one for me and I'm not sure I'm gonna entirely nail it but I did think of the Secret Garden, which is kind of, I guess it's a family story because it's about this girl who goes to live with her uncle after her parents pass away and she's like a horrible child but she moves to this mansion and she has like a mysterious uncle and there's like uh, another person living in the house that she doesn't ever see and at the end they sort of come together as a family in a way and there's this lovely garden in it I guess that's kind of, I don't know if I would really call it cozy, but I think it's a little bit lighter because it is a children's book. The only other one that I can really think of is They Were Sisters by Dorothy Whipple, but I feel like this isn't entirely like a, a cozy family story. The reason I'm thinking of it is because it's like a slice of life type of situation, and the story is about three sisters, but it is also about these three sisters marrying three very different men and ending up in very different situations and not all of that is like super cozy but I do think there is something cozy about slice of life stories and sisterhood and sort of books set in the English countryside. <laughs> Next we got I guess kind of like a general one but I really like this request it just says your favorite gothic classic. I gotta say, I'm not super original with my answers, probably, but my all-time favorite gothic classic is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Love that book. It's very, like, it's perfect for autumn. Like, either in that transition period between summer and autumn or just, like, straight up autumn. This is a great book to read, and I love it. I also like books like Jane Eyre, Weathering Heights. Both of those are great gothic classics. And then just to mix it up so we have a little bit of something different as well, I guess Edgar Allan Poe's works, like either his short stories or his poems. I love those. I haven't read them in quite some time, but I used to be obsessed with them when I was a teen. And I really should reread some of them. Some of them I do reread every once in a while, but I kind of want to make my way through all of his work one more time. All right, so I have all of the buns on this tray. I'm gonna let them rise for a little while and then we'll do the string, I guess. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking maybe I should do like an egg wash 
on it so that it looks a little bit better. I don't know, but we're gonna let this rise for now. While we wait for that, we're gonna do some more requests. I think I've mentioned this before, but my least favorite part of baking is waiting <laughs> for things to like rise or like cool down. I lose my mind because I just want to eat the baked goods that I'm making. But filming a video while I'm baking this kind of thing is actually quite helpful because I have something else to do while I have to wait for these things to do what they need to do. <laughs> Moving on to the next request though, it says gothic moody book but with no fantasy element. My main one for this that I thought of is perfume, which is kind of like it's gothic but it is horror and it's very moody and very dark and it's about <laughs> it's about this guy who has an extraordinary sense of smell and that like the descriptions of that are so particular and it's very very engrossing and it's disgusting like that book is disgusting but i mean that in the best possible way it's so well written. I also think the Essex Serpent has some gothic elements to it. It's very atmospheric. It is a little bit of a slower book though and it's definitely character driven so if you're not into that you might not like it but the setting and the atmosphere of that book is so good. I also did think of a book that I read and I had some mixed feelings about but there are some elements to that book that I think a lot of people would enjoy and I feel like it kind of fits this a little bit. It's The Maidens which is a mystery thriller type novel but I feel like it has I think it's again like the school setting and there's like kind of like a secret society and it's probably more dark and moody than gothic but I do think there's like a vibe to that book that fits this pretty well. Then we have someone who just wrote, I'd like something really weird and creepy. I do hope that you actually want something really weird because I've read some weird books and I have some recommendations for you. The first one is one that I read quite a while ago and I thought of the other day and I kind of forgot that I'd read it but it was a very very weird book but very good. It's called Midwinter Blood. And the thing with this is that it's kind of a weird recommendation because I don't remember that much of the plot, but I remember how that book made me feel. And it was a very, very weird book. I do also feel like I remember there being some creepy elements because like the setup of the story is a little bit weird. So I feel like this would be a good one. Also, obviously I have to mention Bunny because that is a super weird book. And there are a lot of really creepy elements to that and it gets more and more creepy but it also gets more and more weird and it's the kind of book where you might not entirely understand what's going on but it will creep you out a little bit and it's definitely strange. It is one of those books though that I know really divides opinions but I really liked it. <laughs> I guess you could also go the science fiction route if you're into that. For that, I would recommend Ubik, which is one of the strangest books that I've ever read. And there are some really, really creepy things going on in that book. I really want to reread it because I feel like I missed a lot of stuff because I really did not understand what was going on. But then you get to the end and it's sort of explained to you. And I think it would be interesting to reread it going into it, knowing what's going on. But there are some really creepy scenes in that and it's very, very good. The next request says a witchy book without romance. Now I'm gonna be honest, sometimes when I read books where the romance isn't the main thing, I will forget that there was romance in the book. But I thought of two for this where it's definitely at least not a part of the main story. The first one is A Secret History of Witches which follows several generations of witches from like the early 1800s up until the Second World War. And the thing is, we follow all of these different women and they do have in their lives romantic relationships, but it's definitely not a main part of the story. And it's not romance in the sense that 
you actually like get to know the couple or anything it's very much just about the women that one is a little bit of a slow burn though and it's very character driven and it's more like witches in the traditional sense and not witches set in a fantasy world if that makes sense you could also go for the witches of new york which again I feel like maybe there is a little bit of romance in that book but it's definitely not a part of the main story and I don't remember any of it but it's about these two witches who run a tea shop and they do sell tea but they also tell fortunes and stuff like that and this witch comes from out of town and joins them and there's a whole thing about what's happening to her and she brings some trouble with her in a way and Again, quite character driven, but there is probably, it is a little bit shorter than the other one and there might be more stuff happening in that one if I remember correctly. I will mention though, I did a whole video recently about witch books, so you're welcome to check that out if you want like other recommendations as well. Then someone wants cozy small town mystery and I don't know what's happening with my brain these days, but I had a really hard time thinking of these because I feel like I say all the time that I love small town mysteries but then when I think about it I don't know if a lot of those or like I don't know if I've read a lot of cozy small town mysteries and I really should read more of them but the first one that I thought of was of course The Thursday Murder Club which I can never go a video without recommending. <laughs> this one is set in a small retirement village and I've talked about this book so much but one of my favorite cozy mysteries. I think this is a really really fun series and we're following these elderly people which is just great. I also guess I don't know if it's really cozy but it is a small town mystery and I don't know I'm gonna recommend it anyway it's The Appeal. I don't think this is classified as cozy mystery but it's not like super violent or anything which is what a lot of people want when they read cozy mysteries. It's I guess it's not super violent because it's an epistolary novel so we're just reading like correspondence between people and there's not that much of that but it is a small town mystery and you get like a very defined cast of characters that you're trying to sort your way through and it's a very very good book. I feel like it's cozy mystery adjacent. <laughs> Again though if any of you have any cozy small town mystery recommendations let us all know. I'm sure that I have read some that I'm just forgetting right now, which is gonna be embarrassing when you all comment it, but that's okay. <laughs> then I got several requests that just said like spooky thriller and gothic thriller, and the thing is I don't really have that many recommendations for this actually because I don't know if I've read that many spooky thrillers. I am very easily frightened. <laughs> So I don't read a lot of horror or like like super creepy books but the main one that I have for this is one that I've already mentioned it's The Strings of Murder. I think this is gothic and spooky but the perfect level of spooky in a way where it's also like super entertaining and not actually frightening because I can't deal with being scared and it takes nothing to scare me, unfortunately. <laughs> it's funny though, because I say I'm easily frightened, but I feel like it's mostly with like books and movies. I can deal with books, like scary books or spooky books better than movies. The minute it's visual, it, it really, really freaks me out and I can handle none of it. Like I haven't seen a horror movie in years, unless it's very, very light horror. But in real life, I'm not as easily spooked. So I don't know why it's like movies and TV series and like books that freak me out, but I do think I am a little bit delicate. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna try to do the string on these now. I guess I gotta be pretty careful so I don't like ruin the rising that it's just done, but I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try one first and then see if I can actually do this while talking. <laughs> so I don't know how well you can see this, but it's now slightly pumpkin shaped at least. It's not super even but we're just gonna go with it and see how it goes. Maybe it'll look a little bit more pumpkin shaped when it's actually risen a little bit more. I don't know but I'm gonna do this for the rest of them. I absolutely cannot do this while talking so I'm gonna do the rest. Be right back. Okay so that took way too long. 
but they look very cute. I'm gonna let them rise some more and yeah, we're nearing the time where we get to eat these. In the meanwhile, let's do some more requests. The next one says, a good mystery for fall. I think that a lot of mysteries are perfect to read for fall, but maybe my main one would be And Then There Were None, which is one of, one of, if not the best mystery novel that I've ever read. It is so good. It's a classic and I feel like it's perfect for fall because it's set on this island and it's quite like dark and stormy and it just gets worse and worse and darker and more gloomy the further into the book you get and the atmosphere is so good. I also just think the mystery is great and it's one of those books that I feel like it's so good that you could easily like reread it even though you know what's gonna happen because it's just so good. I could also mention several of the other books that I've mentioned but I also thought of Misery which I feel like is more autumn transitioning into winter because that book takes place over quite a long time but it's quite unhinged which I feel like is great for fall and it's great to read when it's just dark outside and it's filled with very very interesting characters. Then someone wants a historical fiction with a female main character perfect for autumn. I want to recommend a book that I very recently finished. It's Opium and Absinthe, which I feel like is a great book for fall because it's historical fiction and we're following this female main character who has just lost her sister and there's some mystery around that because the sister is found with her body drained of blood and with puncture wounds in her neck. And this is happening at the time when Dracula by Bram Stoker has just been published. So there's some like stuff around that which I feel like adds a lot of intrigue and that makes me think of fall because it's kind of like vampires and stuff. And then the main character is also addicted to opium. So she's trying to solve her sister's mystery through an opium haze which is very interesting. I very, very much enjoy this. I feel like it's a great book to read for fall, even though it's not set particularly in fall. It has like autumn vibes. I also would like to recommend Hamnet, <laughs> which is a book I recommend all the time. And I'm recommending it because it is appropriate for this request, but also because I just really like recommending that book because it's so freaking good. Next, we've got a little bit of a different one. It says a nonfiction about nature. I don't have anything particular about fall and nature, but I do have a book about trees that I would like to recommend because I feel like trees are a big part of any season, but also fall. It's called The Hidden Life of Trees. I read this quite a few years ago and it was so interesting and it's I think this book is a testament to how if a nonfiction book is written well you can read about any topic and it's like super interesting and I learned so much from this book and it made me have a heightened like respect for trees because there's so much with trees that I didn't know before I read that book. If you're not into trees though I have a bird book for you. <laughs> it's Crazy for Birds, which is such a treat to read. Now, I am probably more interested in trees than I am in birds, but I loved that book. It was so good and it's a beautiful, like beautiful book because it's fully illustrated and it's just filled with all of these facts about birds. And again, I went away from that book having learned a lot and I guess after I read that book, I am more interested in birds than I thought I was. <laughs> then someone writes, I would like a book that takes place in a gloomy old mansion that is not Rebecca or Shirley Jackson. I feel like I have the perfect recommendation for this, but it is a little bit of a wild book. It's The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This book is insane and it's a roller coaster and you just got to get on the ride and try to figure it out and it's packed with action but the thing is there's like the characters are really good as well and the setup is amazing it's about this guy who is stuck in a time loop and he's told 
that he has eight days to figure out who's gonna kill Evelyn Hardcastle on this day that he keeps reliving and he keeps waking up in different people's bodies and they're all stuck in this mansion and there's like a gloomy foggy forest surrounding it and there's more going I mean obviously being stuck in a time loop is already weird but there is more going on than you would think and it is wild <laughs> it's such an atmospheric book though and if you really just want to get sucked into something this is great I read this when it was I was actually on vacation and it was summer where I was but I kind of wish that I had read it when it was fall and if I ever reread that book it will be during autumn because I just feel like it's the perfect fit. I also thought of a book that I read last year called The Haunting of Ashburn House which to be honest I didn't absolutely love but I did really enjoy and one of the things that's stuck with me from that book is like this big house that this main character goes to and there's like a mystery there is a little bit of like fantasy elements in that and the house is really atmospheric and I do know that a lot of people really like that book so I don't know if I was just very critical when I read it but the house in that is great. The next request that I got really made me chuckle. It just says something that will break my heart. Thank you. I have two go-to recommendations for this and I have mentioned these before and I've recommended them loads but I have to Recommend them again because they really are perfect for something that will make you cry and break your heart. The first one is The Song of Achilles, which is a romance book, but it's also historical fiction. It has some fantasy elements. It is a retelling of the story of Achilles and Patroclus? Patroclus? I never know how to say that, but the story is very much about them and their lives together and their love. And it's so heartbreaking. I think the thing that makes this so emotional is the writing because the way it's written is so intense and it just really it'll rip you to shreds but if that's what you want it's perfect. If you want to go a little bit of a different route though I would recommend Miss Benson's Beetle and the thing with this is that this is a book about female friendship and it's a book about this woman who goes on an adventure kind of so it's kind of like an adventure book and she takes this other woman with her and they don't really get along and they don't know each other and I feel like if you're I mean maybe it's the same for guys but I feel like if you're a woman and you read that book there's something about that friendship that is just so lovely and so wonderful and there's something really emotional about reading about that kind of female friendship. I don't feel like we read enough about female friendship and that book is really really good and I really like you get super invested in this friendship and how they come together and then you get to the end and maybe it was just me. I don't feel like it was but it really made me cry. I was so upset. <laughs> finish that book. I feel like we're nearing the time when we can put these into the oven. They look pretty good. So I'm gonna turn the oven on because it's one of those things that I very often forget and then when it's done the oven is cold. So I'm gonna do that and then I think we'll leave them. I only have a couple of requests left so I think we're gonna do that then put them in the oven and then I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and we'll see how they turn out. The next request that I got says a lesser known gothic classic that deserves more hype. I can tell from all of these requests that there are a lot of requests for gothic books so maybe I should do a whole video about my favorite gothic books. I don't know but for this one <laughs> I would recommend The Lake of the Dead which is a Norwegian classic that has been recently like translated into English which is very exciting. I started talking about that book before it was translated and I remember a lot of people were like I hope it gets translated soon and it has been. I can't vouch for the translation obviously because I read it in Norwegian but it is kind of cool to be able to recommend a Norwegian gothic classic. The story is about this group of friends who go up to the like forest to this cabin because one of their friends has gone there and he's kind of like disappeared I guess 
and they go up there and the cabin is really spooky and creepy and there's something about Norwegian forests and like cabins and stuff that just really freak me out and has amazing atmosphere in this book. I will mention it does have some I think outdated views on women in it. I think this was published quite some time ago and there are a couple of things in there where I was like mm. but then again it is also just like some of the characters have opinions <laughs> that aren't that great and sometimes characters have that. It did bother me a little bit but I still really enjoyed this and like the atmosphere and the feeling of that cabin and all of that is it's something. If you don't want to read that though I can recommend Sleep No More which is a collection of six like short stories. I don't know if this is really lesser known because I know that P.D. James is actually quite famous but I never hear anyone talk about this book so I'm just gonna mention it and it also has a lovely autumnal cover which you know is always great. Second to last, someone wants something original and mildly creepy. I could only really think of one thing for this. I don't know if it's that original really but it felt original to me. It's the book You Should Have Left which is one of my favorite horror books but I think I mentioned this recently. Like my level of being able to deal with horror is like I've mentioned very low and so this felt very creepy to me. But I do think that if you read a lot of horror, it might not feel that creepy, but I really like this one. It's short and it's about this super creepy house and a family goes there and there's a writer and he's writing in his notebook and it just gets weirder and weirder and just very, very creepy. Lastly, before we put these buns in the oven, someone wants a spooky book with ghosts that is not a classic. One of my favorite books to recommend for autumn is perfect for this one. It's Through the Woods, which is a graphic novel filled with several like scary stories and it is both a treat and terrifying. It's a terrifying treat to read but it's so so good. Not all of the story has ghosts in them but there are some of them that do and all of these stories are just very creepy and the color palette of the whole book is like black, white, blue and red and that's almost all of the colors that are used and you can imagine <laughs> what the red is and it's like pretty terrifying. There is something about the art style that is quite unsettling. If you want like a full on novel though I can recommend a historical fiction novel. It's The Diviners which is fantastic. It's urban fantasy and it's set in the 1920s in America like in New York and the area around that and we follow a main character who can like get premonitions by touching certain kinds of stuff and she is a diviner because she has this power and there are other diviners as well and they sort of find each other through this book and there is a terrifying like bad guy in this and I don't want to give too much away, but there are ghosts, so there's that. And it's very, very atmospheric and just really the bad guy is super creepy in this. <laughs> it's also the first in a series, so if you really like that, there's more to read. I think the first book is definitely the best one, but I love the characters in here. I love the setting. The 1920s is one of my favorite time periods to read about, and you really get that like flapper age thing in this which I think is just great and it's a really fun book to read. It I wonder if it's kind of like YA but it doesn't feel super YA if that makes sense. Now those were most of the requests that I got. I did try to curate this a little bit because a lot of the requests that I got I have already like very specifically recommended books for in other videos of this kind. So I skipped a few, so I'm sorry if yours didn't make it, but I did the ones where I felt like I had some new books to recommend and I also tried to go for the ones that were actually like related to autumn. So I hope that's okay. But I did, as always, get a couple of requests that I couldn't think of any books for, so I want to share them with you. So maybe some of you have some recommendations that you can share 
with all of us really. The first one is for a book set in a cozy small town in fall, any genre. I can't think of a single book that I've read that's set in a small town specifically in fall and I would like to read some of those books as well. So if anyone has any recommendations for that, I would love to know and I'm sure the person who asked for this would also love to know. The other one that I couldn't think of anything for was Cozy Autumn in the Countryside. Which again, I've read loads of books set in the countryside, but I can't think of any that were like specifically set in the countryside during fall, where it's actually like, you get descriptions of it and stuff. And I would like to read that as well. So any recommendations, send them our way. Okay, so I'm gonna do an egg wash on these now and get them in the oven. And I will see you when they are done. I also, by the way, got some of these like cinnamon sticks that I thought I could use as like the stem so that it actually looks like a pumpkin but I don't know if this is gonna work that well but give me a minute and I will come back when this is all done and assembled. I really do hope that at least one of these looks like an actual pumpkin <laughs> at the end. If not I'll be so disappointed because I spent so much time putting the string on it and I would also like one just to be able to show you because I think it would be very cute. So these turned out so cute. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I kind of am a little bit. <laughs> now I have added a little like cinnamon stick thing so that it looks like a little stem. So it actually looks like a little pumpkin. And I just think this is so autumnal and sweet. It doesn't taste like, I mean, it's just like a regular sweet bun with a little bit of extra spice, but oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I will say taking the like, the yarn out of the buns is a little bit challenging, but the result is really good. So I feel like it was worth it. You just kind of have to spend a little bit of time on it. But if you're very hungry, you can just rip into it. And like this little stem thing is just like pure cinnamon, so you probably wouldn't eat it, but very, very sweet. Now these have completely cooled down now. I did eat one when I took them out of the oven because these kinds of buns are very good when they're warm. And I ate it with a little bit of jam and cream and it was lovely. That concludes today's baking adventure though. I know a lot of you really love <laughs> seeing baking, so here you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope some of you found some new books that you would like to read and if any of you have any like specific fall recommendations I would love to hear about it. If you have like the perfect book for fall tell us about it. I'm sure all of us would like to know. That's kind of it for today though. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today as always and I will see you soon. Bye!